Sober party people, where you at? Welcome to the podcast. This episode is brought to you by Promises Behavioral Health. And before I tell you who Promises in, you may hear a little bit of a lisp coming out of my mouth. Let me tell you why. I drink a lot of coffee. The coffee stains are brutal. So I got some whitening strips in my mouth right now, and I didn't plan on doing the intro after I put the teeth whitening strips in. It's a good example of how we just got to roll with it sometimes. Just roll with the flow. I didn't even think about it until I hit record. In any case, who cares? We're doing our best. Who is Promises? It's a family of mental health and addiction treatment centers based out of Nashville, Tennessee. They're ready to help you or your loved ones stay committed and achieve your promise of recovery. There's a lot of treatment centers out there that you can reach out to for help. How do you know who you can trust? That's where Promises comes in. I personally work with some of the team at Promises. I've met them. I've worked hand in hand with them. They care. Many of them have family and friends in recovery themselves. They also have highly trained staff members throughout a variety of treatment centers. To learn more about Promises, here's what you can do. You can go to promisesbehavioralhealth.com slash sober guy, or you can call 888-205-1890. Tell them that you heard about them from that Sober Guy podcast. A big shout out to them, to the team. Love you guys. Thanks for partnering with us. We appreciate you. Also, let me tell you about Clean Cause. Clean Cause is an organic, sparkling, herba mate energy drink, rich in minerals, amino acids, naturally occurring caffeine. I just made a post about it on Instagram, actually, the other day, and I had a bunch of good comments and uh, people checking it out. 50% of all Clean Cause drink profits support recovery from alcohol and drug addiction. Get 20% off your first order by going to www.cleancause.com and entering the promo code SOBERGUY. One more time, that's 20% off your first order. Go to cleancause.com, enter the promo code SOBERGUY. All right, this episode with Marcus is great. We talked about how to tell the difference between ego and confidence, why it's important to have a coach or a sponsor uh, and be surrounded by positive influences. Uh, We also talked about getting rid of the victim mentality. And of course, Marcus shares some of his story, many peaks and valleys uh, in between and how he pulled himself out of of, uh, uh, addiction and uh, rebuilt his life. Uh, So I know you're going to love it. If you're struggling out there, reach out to someone. Uh, Don't let the addiction, the alcohol, the drugs, whatever it is that you're going through, isolate you because that's what it will try to do. Don't do that. Reach out, hit a meeting. There's a meeting finder on the website. That's soberguy.com slash get help. Uh, and reach out to a friend. Just talk about it. It's the best thing you can do. Um, maybe this podcast will help get you in the right mood to do that. Bring you up a little bit if you ain't feeling so hot. We love you. Here's Marcus Ogden. That Sober Guy podcast contains adult content, merciless truth, and emotional nudity. Listener discretion is advised. I'm Shane Raymer. You're listening to That Sober Guy podcast, and we help people stay sober. Good to be with you today. If this is your first time listening to the show, welcome. Glad you're here. You are in the right place. Always uh, putting some good content for you together today. Be sure to check us out at thatsoberguy.com. Uh, you can connect with us on Instagram at Real That Sober Guy and on Twitter at Shane Raymer. Uh, I got a great guest lined up for you today. Really excited to share some of his story. He's got a new book out. His name's Marcus Ogden, and uh, Marcus was drafted into the NFL in 2003. Uh, played as an offensive lineman with the Titans, the Bills, the Ravens, and the Jaguars. And after five years of playing in the league, he decided to retire, pursue a career in construction and contracting. And a few years later. Um, Marcus's life began to fall apart. During that time, he struggled with his sobriety. Uh, and after his darkest hours, he got a part-time job as a custodian, started working out, fed his body, got his life back on the right track, got sober, uh, lost over 100 pounds, became a motivational speaker. And now he's a best-selling author, a marketing leader, and uh, helping to build success for others. Uh, and I mentioned the book. He's got a new book out. It actually just dropped. Uh, it's called The Success Cycle, Three Keys for Achieving Your Goals in Business and Life. Um, we're going to dive into that today and uh, some more of the principles behind the success cycle. Uh, it's a great story. There's much more to it. I left it out on purpose. We can hear it straight from Marcus. So uh, welcome to the podcast, man. It's good to be with you. 
How you doing, Shane? Thanks for having me on, man. You doing all right today? I'm do I'm doing great, man. You know, I uh, we got up early this morning, and my wife and I got just a great workout in, man. It was called the Coyote. It just literally kicked my butt, just like 20 short rounds of box jumps and burpees and uh, some thrusters, all kinds of fun stuff, man, at the gym. So it's always good to start nice. the day out like that. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, how, how, how are you, man? Do you start your day out a lot with a good workout? What does that look like for you? Same for me. I go to the yeah. gym every day. I'm home getting that gym in, that workout in, lifting, and really focusing on the mind, body, and spirit, and soul. And if I don't get a workout in, it's just my day's not going to be effective. So I, I got to get yeah. in there every day. Yeah, that's good. I know you kind of feel out of balance, out of whack, the mind, the body, everything just not lined up on those days uh, where, where, where it's tough to get it in or you don't get it in. Um, well, we're going to talk about the book today. Uh, first of all, congratulations on uh, the launch of that. Uh, we just spoke a little bit before we started recording and you said it's doing really, really well, man. They've already ordered a second batch of copies. That's awesome. So I just want to say congrats to you on that. I know it's a lot of work to put in. Thanks, man. It took us about almost two years. My wife was the ghostwriter. And it's a lot of work, man, like you said, between getting the content out, writing it out, editing, going back and forth, layouts, you know, production. But the success cycle came out January 28th, 2020. And like you said, we're doing very, very well. We're very excited about it. My wife and our team is excited about the growth and how, how it's helping us to grow our brand on a national and international scale. Yeah, that's awesome, man. Um, and, and speaking of the success cycle, I kind of put down the three points here, ambition, drive, and hard work. And I want to dive into those and have you kind of unpack them a little bit. But first, I thought sure. maybe we can just have you share a little bit of your story, man. You've had some peaks and some valleys. Um, you, you were a former NFL player, you are a former NFL player. Maybe jump into that and give us a little background about yourself. Sure, Shane. So I'm from Washington, D.C. Uh, my brother Jonathan and I are uh, from the D.C. area. He played in the NFL for the Baltimore Ravens for 12 years. I was uh, a good football player in high school. I ended up getting a full scholarship to Howard University. Went to Howard University, played football as a four-year starter at offensive tackle. I was drafted to the NFL in 2003 by Jack Del Rio, who used to be the linebacker coach mm -hmm. with the Ravens when my brother won the Super Bowl. So I knew Jack, amazing guy, great coach, great leader. And he's actually now with the Redskins as a defensive coordinator. So he's back in football. I'm loving seeing that. He's just a great coach with lots of great uh, information, tons of knowledge. And then I went from Jacksonville, went to Baltimore, then went to Buffalo and finished up with the Titans. And I had a great career, almost six years in the National Football League. After that, I struggled with transition. Uh, I got hooked on alcohol, painkillers, you know, nightlife. And I ended up for about six months just really feeling sorry for myself, you know, defiling myself because I was like, man, who am I? Yeah. Am I who am I? Am I, 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 I? Football was my identity. And I tell people all the time now, football is a platform. It's a job. It's not who you are. Mm -hmm. So I try to tell young athletes, your sport is not your identity. You are your identity. So once I got myself together, I found a construction company in 2008 when the market tanked and we grew to be the largest African-American subcontracting company in the area of site work for two years in Baltimore wow. City and in the state of Maryland. That was an eight figure a year business. And as the company grew, Shane, so did my ego, my bravado, <laughs> you couldn't tell me anything. And my employees picked up on that culture and it seeped into their everyday being. And in 2013, I lost the company after spending close to two to two and a half million dollars in less than 90 days, did my wow. work. The, uh, it was approved by the contractor, by the developer, but they denied the change order because I had no signed contract because I trusted the client and I thought they would take care of me and it didn't happen that way. So after that, I moved from Baltimore to Carolina. I was basically had a couple hundred bucks in my pocket. We were broke. Uh, my, my fiance, who's now my wife and I, had some really challenging times. And when I got down here and I was working for Merrill Lynch, I got a job. The NFL helped me get a job. was working for Merrill Lynch. Got fired about two months later. All my fault. Got a job the next day to a construction company. Got fired five days later <laughs> wow. because they shut down the organizational, uh, you know, materials and their sales and equipment shop. So then the only job I could get was coaching kids football, which was great, but I was making enough money. But what happened is in August, all of my kids were going the season. So I was already not making a lot of money to begin with. But then when the season started, all my clients stopped coming because they were what in season. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. So the only job I could get was a custodian working for $8.25 an hour on the graveyard shift in downtown Raleigh. And I tell people all the time, having the job as a custodian was not a low point. It was a job. I was grateful to have it. Yeah. What was my low point is when someone's trash and their spoiled milk and their banana peels and their rotten meat got on my bare skin on my work shift about 4.30 in the morning on my work shift. And I would said to myself, all right, what in the hell has happened to your life? Mm. And I realized, Shane, that the thing that was missing from my life was accountability. I always blame somebody else for not the job didn't go right. It was my employee's fault, my partner's, the contract. Like it was everybody's fault under the sun, but Marcus Sneed Ogden. And that day I realized, okay, Marcus, you had an NFL career. You were accountable to your coaches, your teammates, and to your to your craft. In your construction company, you were accountable and when it was good to your partner, your employees, your family, everyone. So that's what's missing. So you got a choice. You can either put accountability into your life now, or you can spend the rest of your life doing exactly what you don't want to do, which is being handed what life gives you, Mm. not taking what you want. And that's when I say, I'm going to become a speaker. And I launched my career in 2014, didn't get a paid job for two and a half years. And I finally got my first paid job in April 2016 uh, for uh, uh, Miller Mock College in Wilmington, North Carolina. And I haven't looked back since. I've worked for 13 Fortune 500 brands. Of the 13, eight are Fortune 100. I'll actually be doing a big job next month, uh, February 12th and 13th for Liberty Mutual uh, in Boston. Uh, I've worked for clients like New York Life to Home Depot to Axe Advisors to NFL Player Engagement. And I tell you all the time, in my life as a speaker, I've taken my experiences and put into stories with action steps. But most of the time, people struggle with this craft or any other craft where you have to put in a lot of work. Everybody wants success today. Doesn't happen that way. It took me six years. Well, it took me almost two years to get my first paid job, two and a half years to get my first paid job. It's taken me almost really about five years to really build this to where people know our brand as a speaker, consultant, author. In football, it took me uh, eight years, all of high, I'm sorry, nine years, all of high school, all five years of college to be an NFL player. Construction, it took me four years to build that first eight figure year uh, income annually. So my book, our first book took us two years to write. Our second book took us almost two years to write. Nothing happens with success overnight. So when I tell people all the time, they've got to learn to accept that and be consistent, then it's up to them what they want to do or they, want to, or they don't. It's up to them, yeah. them at that point. Yeah, that's good, man. And thank you for sharing a little bit about uh, background story. Uh, it's crazy, man, the ups and the downs of that. Uh, and and I think it's such a good point that we want that immediate gratification, especially those of us in recovery. We want to see results immediately. We don't see a lot of the time people's success, the struggles, the time that took, the sacrifices, all those things that went into it. And one thing I wanted to uh, to kind of bring up here and maybe have you touch on a little bit is you had, I'm a firm believer that that God has big things for anybody and a purpose for everybody um, when we're on that path and we're open to it. And when we're playing that victim role, it's impossible to to even acknowledge that, let alone uh, thrive into what God really has for us. So my question for you is, and for those out there listening, um, I want you to really listen uh, to what Marcus has to say. And I'm, I'm curious myself is how do you overcome And how do you get out of having the door slammed in your face so many times in those downs when you're just at the lowest of the low and and you hit that bottom? How do you pull yourself up out of that um, and and really get out of that victim mentality and move forward? You have got to double down on your strengths and stop focusing on your weaknesses and focusing on what you don't do well. When doors get slammed in your face, It's not because you are a bad person. It's not because you may not be a valuable asset. It might be the person doesn't want to spend money today. It might be the person looking for something different. It might be a person's having a bad day. But when you start focusing on 
the weaknesses all the time. Now, again, you need to know what your weaknesses are to improve them, but you shouldn't be focusing on them. You should be focusing and doubling down and betting the house on your strengths. And also, you have to be confident at all times. Even if you're having a bad day, you have to maintain confidence. And you do that with yeah. three things. One is good, excellent physiology. Second is controlling your mental focus. Be grateful for what you have. Stop complaining about what you don't have. Hmm. And then the third thing, you have to really believe to your core that you deserve success. If you can do those three things and be always confident, no matter what you're facing, and if you can always just double down and bet the house on your strengths and stop complaining about your weaknesses, mm, you good. can push through anything. One of the things that I've really struggled with personally and think about a lot is how to different how to differentiate. I think I said that correctly. Uh, ego, did. ego, and confidence. Right. Like, because uh -huh. especially for, you know, the, the ego can get a hold of us. And then all of a sudden, before we know it, we don't even know we have this ego, but it exists. We all have it to some extent, no matter what we're human beings. How do you kind of go from being confident, um, being confident in the work you do, being confident in yourself, being confident in your recovery, your program, whatever it is, and kind of making sure that that ego doesn't get the best of that. Here's where it is, Shane. Confidence is not something we're born with. Mm. confidence is what we need to turn on at a specific time or moment to execute a task. Confidence should be coming on, for example, when I played football, a game in college, the NFL, I would be confident to go and execute that game. The minute the game was over, my confidence came down that I didn't need it. I'm going to everyday life. When you have an ego, you're confident all the time even when you don't need to be. Mm. And this is why I lost my business. I was confident when I woke up in the morning, when I took a shower, when I got to the uh, office, when I went to job sites, when I was talking to people. Every freaking second of the day, I was always confident. That's an ego. Yeah. But when you're That's someone good. who can turn it on to execute a specific task, and then turn it off and go back to your normal everyday disposition as a humble, very listening, open person, that's confidence. So again, ego is when you're confident every single freaking day of the day, of the week, of the year, and you don't know how to be humble. When you are confident, you turn it on to execute a task, then once that task is completed, you come back down to reality and you come off that high. That's what it's all about. So good. Guys, listening, rewind that and listen to it three or four times. I know I'm going to again because that's good right there. And that's uh, that's that's a take on it. I haven't I haven't quite heard yet. So thank you. Um, I want to get into the book. I have one more quick question for you before we do that. Um, sure. You mentioned um, you mentioned um, uh, prescription medication, alcohol. That's a part of your story. And obviously being that we have, a, you know, most of the people either have someone that struggles with addiction or, or is in recovery themselves. Um, what are your thoughts on that, man? Can you share a little bit more about that, about your story, how you kind of pulled yourself out, yourself out of that and how you've been able to remain sober? Yep. So basically it's really about taking it a day at a time. And when I was hooked on painkillers, especially it was just my coping mechanism and it was my way to escape reality. And then once the high was gone, I woke up, I was like, man, where am I? Oh, I'm in the same place I was when I got that way, when I got here. Yeah. So when I stopped trying to find an out, when I stopped trying to mask the pain of not being a football player anymore, losing my father suddenly, unexpectedly, at only 57, I'm sorry, 58 years of age, you know, going through all the process, I'm sorry, let me go back. He was 57. Mm. He passed away at 57 years of age. So young. And I, it was unexpected. And he was young. And it was, not a, it was not a pleasant way to go. And, you know, all the things, and I said, you know what? And that's what happened is one day I woke up and I said, okay, Marcus, let's get some help because your father would not want you to continue to do what you're doing mm. because you're missing him and you're not dealing with the reality that you're no longer a professional athlete, that you don't have him anymore. So once I did that, then I, I went to the NFL and I started getting some help. And once I was able to get help, I realized that everything starts with me. 
if I'm going to be healthy and be in a good state of mind, I have to believe I deserve it and I have to go through and I have to do it. If, if I don't believe that, Shane, nobody can tell me or make me believe it. Yeah. So it all, so recovery or feeling good, getting back to healthy starts with you. You have to change your value system and basically you have to create habits because your habits are your values in motion. Mm -hmm. So if you are someone who values health, right, and wellness, yeah. that habit is going to the gym. If you're someone that values a stable marriage and relationship, well, your habit's gonna be to have open dialogue with your spouse. So it's the same principle. You have to really redefine your values and create habits around those healthy values and make sure that you are executing the habits and the habits are again, are your values in motion. You need to be executing that at a high level that you can then get your life back on track. That's good, man. How important is health and, and exercise and diet for you in recovery and just in life in general? It's everything because if you're not healthy or you don't feel good about yourself, what are you gonna do? complain you're gonna gripe you're yeah. gonna moan and once you start that what are you doing you're playing the victim, victim. role yep. the minute the victim role starts it doesn't stop it yeah. becomes oh i had a bad day oh i had a bad week oh i had a bad month so i tell people i go speak if you have a bad day and you're a salesperson you have to go home take a shower rinse it off wake up in the morning with a new positive mindset and say i deserve to be better than I was yesterday, and I'm gonna do better today. You cannot allow negativity to seep into your mind consistently, because if you do, that creates unhealthy, bad values, and then you start executing really bad habits. Yeah, that's good, man. I'm pumped up right now. Shoot, man, that's good stuff. <laughs> I dig it. That's um, you know I mean, I can speak. I can yeah. speak here or there. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I love it, man. No, it's good. Uh, well, let's let's jump into the book a little bit, man. Um, you know, like I, I mentioned earlier, it just came out. Uh, the success cycle. Um, that that's that's uh, the, pretty much the basis of the book, right? I mean, I'm, I know there's. You mentioned there's. Uh, is there short stories in there as well, or was that the previous book? There is. Yep, there, there is. is. Each, you know, we have you know a backstory in the beginning. So you can a little bit know about who I am, where I came from, and then we get into different facets of ambition and how I had to set goals to become a speaker. We talk about things in my life where I had to set goals. We get into uh, talking about drive, really focusing on inspiration over motivation. When you're inspired to make a real change, that's when the magic happens. If you're motivated for a short term, you're not going to be successful. That's why I tell people all the time, Shane, I'm not a motivational speaker. I'm an inspirational keynote speaker. Mm. If I've motivated you, I haven't done my job. If I've inspired you, I've done my job. Yeah. And then hard work, focusing on you, not the competition. You said it earlier. Everyone looks at people on social media. Oh, yeah. oh, they've got the great life. Oh, they've got the boats. Oh, they've got the home. You have no idea what goes on off social media. So why are you only looking at what people put out that, sh that shows you their greatness, mm. but doesn't show you about parts about their real life or who you are, right, or yeah. who they are? So that's the whole point. The point is you have to put yourself in that position to achieve success. And you do that by focusing on ambition, being driven, and hard work. So again, be ambitious, set your goals, create a roadmap. Be driven, be inspired over being motivated. And then when it comes to number three, which is gonna be hard work, focus on you, not the competition. Yeah, that's good. And I, I, I love, you mentioned this, I think earlier, I can't remember if it was before we were recording or in the conversation so far, but um, one of the big things is, you know, you could be a great speaker, you can motivate people, you can get people riled up, but What's the takeaways? What am I taking away from this? What are some applicable points that I can use in everyday life? That's really where um, where I think that that some growth can come in. What are some of the takeaways from the book that you that you might be able to share that might make one sure. uh, people want to check so it out? The takeaways are we're going to teach you how to set goals, right? We're going to teach you about playing on your strengths, not focusing on your weaknesses. What are some opportunities for you to expand your brand? What are 
the threats to minimize it. When we talk about inspiration, we start talking about different ways you can be inspired, action steps, again, meditation, focusing on being healthy, focusing on making a real change, your diet, a lot of that's in the book as well. I'm talking about hard work, talking about ways to focus on you, creating yourself, like scheduling your time management, charts to be able to manage your progress, KPIs, look at, you know, where were you, to, uh, where are you today? Where are you going to be in three months? Where are you going to be in six months? It's all about applying and creating organized information to get you from A to Z. That's all it's about. So we've talked about uh, some physical stuff, um, some some mental stuff as uh, as well. Um, what is your what is your spiritual program look like? I mean, you just mentioned meditation. I mean, meditation, prayer. I know for me that's such a huge part, and I'm not perfect at it by any means, but I I'm very conscious <coughs> of it, and I I always know um, I can feel inside when I'm kind of out of whack or I'm a little bit off. And, and usually it goes back to, Oh, well, you haven't prayed or meditated in a couple of days. Like you, you probably need to get back and do that. And I think that for me, that just comes with, with, um, getting to know myself a little, a little bit better, uh, especially since I got sober, what does your, uh, spiritual program look like? Uh, what kind of tips do you have for anyone? Same thing. I, I'm all about, you know, praying, being healthy, keeping everything in, a, in succinct and succinct motion. And that if I'm not being someone that's working on myself or always trying to find ways to get back to faith and just, you know, utilize that in the best light and utilize that as a way to, like you said, build some consistency. Yeah. If I'm not doing that, then we have a problem. So I agree with you between prayer, meditation, you know, uh, focusing, uh, you know, having people that you're talking to, coaches or mentors and getting things out that need to be get gotten out. It's all about creating that process and that system. But faith for me and spirituality is a big part. I talk about that all the time. If I didn't have my faith chain, I literally would have not made it when I was trying to end my life with the bottle. And that's really where my tattoos came in because I said, all right, well, if I keep doing the bottle, this is not what my dad wants. So the tattoos was my outlet to stop drinking so much. And that's why I got them. And now they're all family oriented, but that was my yeah. outlet and my release to the alcohol. So yeah. again, the spirituality, the family, everything else is a major part of who I am. And without the faith, I would have not have made it back in 2000. It was about 2007. Too well, too, it was in 2006, in 2007, when I was really in a dark place with the bottle. Yeah, it's funny. You, you mentioned coaching. Um, and I don't know why it is, but uh, as kids, we, we remain very coachable even when we get into our teens, a lot of us. And then we get to be grown men and we think we got it all figured out. You know, I, I don't need, who needs a damn coach? You know what? Like how, how important is coaching? How, like for me, I have a sponsor. I have mentors. I have people around me that can build me up, speak into me. I have people I can rely on to call if I'm going through something, get some advice, get, get their take on something. Such a huge part of, of growth for me and just being a father being a husband, being um, an entrepreneur, uh, all that stuff. Um, what's your take on coaching, man? Do dudes need a coach or what do you think? Everybody needs a coach. Bill Gates has a coach. <laughs> That's good. Right? Yeah. If Bill Gates, who's, a, who's one of the richest men in the world, has a coach, right? LeBron James has a coach on the basketball court, off the basketball court. Mm -hmm. Everyone, Tony Robbins has a coach. Mm. Everyone that's successful has a coach. Why? You need someone to push you out of your comfort zone into your breakthrough zone. That's good. There's three zones I feel in life. Comfort zone, breakthrough zone, arrogance zone. Mm. Your comfort zone is where you stay, where most of us society stay because it's easy. It's comfortable. I can get yeah. up every day. Groundhog day. It's safe. I won't be very wealthy or I won't be a chance to live my life the way I want to live it, whatever that looks like for some people when it comes to success. But I'm going to stay right here, balled up, away from any type of trouble. Yeah. Breakthrough zones where the magic happens. Is there a risk? Of course there is. But are you wanna, do you want to live your life just sitting there always saying, well, what if? Mm -hmm. Or what if I had done this? Or regrets? You don't want to live like that. So that's where you need to be with your breakthrough zone to achieve greatness. The arrogant zone is where I got when I was at the breakthrough zone, but I shifted to the arrogant zone because you couldn't tell me anything. Mm. I was not coachable. I was not a good listener. 
And that's exactly why I went bankrupt. So yeah. anyone that's successful wants to achieve success, you need to invest in a coach. If you invest in a coach, you're going to get exactly where you want to be in life. Yeah, I love that, man. And I love that. I love the word invest. We invest in a lot of things and a lot of us forget that an investment into ourselves uh, can have such a big payoff instead of trying to do it on our own. Everything, man. I know it, it, it just, uh, it's, it's made my life uh, and my growth uh, in recovery. And just as a man, I think too, just having good people around that, that can help with that. So uh, great advice right there. Uh, I have one last question for you and then we'll get in. Uh, we're, we're right up against the time here, but I want to um, make sure I, I have all the show or the links uh, to Marcus's book in the show notes. You can follow him on Instagram and we'll get all that from him just before we uh, wrap up. But last question, question for you for anyone out there man who's struggling right now with addiction they got a loved one who's struggling uh maybe just going through it man they're in a spot where uh, they don't really know what to do um it, they don't know what what's who to reach out to um what what kind of tips or advice or any love man can you can you send their way so what i would tell them is first thing is the person who's struggling or who's the addict you need to let that person know that you're trying to help them for the right reasons and again, you do not want to go and scold them. Or you don't want to go and make them feel bad. What you need to do is go to that person and say, look, you really excel at these strengths, X, Y, Z, when you're healthy. I want the healthy you back. With the healthy you is going to help you be more productive in society. And just tell them this, that they deserve to be healthy and in the right state of mind. And then at that time, you can then go and see some recovery centers or things of that nature in your area. But you have to go to that person and give them some confidence and give them some, some, you know, some, give them some compliments. Otherwise, if you don't do that, the person's going to be very standoffish. They're going to be very much like, oh, I don't want to do that. And then when that happens, what happens? They end up not wanting to go yeah. or they end up going and not applying their, their all. So it's important to give people who are struggling some positive reinforcement, then help them get to where they need to go. Because they, if they leave, if they leave where they are and they have a positive state of mind, when they get to that recovery location, they're much more likely to work through it because they've left on a positive note. Yeah, that's good. Uh, Marcus, man, thanks for taking some time with us today. Where can folks reach out to you? They want to find the book. They want to hit you up on Instagram. Uh, I think it's marcusogden.com as well. Yep, yep. They can find me on Instagram is at Marcus Ogden. They can find me on LinkedIn, Marcus Ogden. Twitter is at Marcus underscore Ogden. And then Facebook is at Marcus Ogden. And then my website is www.marcusogden, M-A-R-Q-U-E-S-O-G-D-E-N. All right, man. Thank you so much for taking some time with us on That Sober Guy Podcast, man. It's been great to chat with you and uh, learned a lot today, man. I hope everyone out there listening had a good time and uh, thank you again. Thanks again to Marcus for coming on the show today. Be sure to check us out at thatsoberguy.com. Uh, you can connect with us on Instagram, at Real That Sober Guy, on Twitter, at Shane Raymer. Uh, thanks to Promises, thanks to Clean Cause, and of course, thanks to all of you for listening to the show and being a part of this community. We love you. Peace, love, and respect. Keep your blood clean. Thank you.